Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be playing part 4 of my Let's Play on To End All Wars. It's still early in the war, I'm still launching attacks as the French and attempting to drive the Germans back, and uh, we'll see what happens here, but hopefully uh, we're off to a decent start, and with the Germans' focus out east, uh, we may have some opportunities to uh, make more progress into Germany. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm just going to jump right back into the stream. This is a stream that was already in progress, so there's not going to be a whole lot of intro. You're just joining something that's already been begun. If you haven't seen any of this, uh, the stream actually started with my part two video of the End All Wars um, series. So if you want to jump back and listen to that first, uh, you'll be able to get through to where we are here. But anyway, uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump back into the stream, and thanks for tuning in again. Um, I don't know roughly I've got, what's the, I wish it would, is there a way to see the total firepower here? I think that's what I'm going to do. I think we'll launch a three-pronged defensive against Mets. It is, although maybe I should wait for these troops to get up. Tell me what I should do. Bring these troops up from Verdun. They're still moving into Verdun. They're taking forever. Oh, but we can't wait forever because then entrenchments will go up. Mm. I've done foraging in the area. That means your supplies are low. This? This region's been pillaged. Are my supplies low? How can I tell? Oh, that's the, I assume that's the middle bar there saying the supplies are low. Shoot. Well, do I launch an attack? I've got to imagine I've got a supply line here. There's a filter that'll show me supplies. Let me take a look at that here real quick, guys. Um, of course, the overlay doesn't work all that well because it cuts out, uh, cuts that out. Political states, regions, alliances, controlling strategic towns, regions where supply can pass through. So it looks like supply can pass through to Theonville. You know, if we've got that green, it's showing that supply can pass through all of these regions. Um, so that's a nice little filter. Showing our, our advance into Germany, this tiny little advance that we've got going here. Everything should be in supply. These are major uh, major towns or supply centers or depots, but uh, we've got one pretty close to the front, so I think we'll, we'll recover that pretty quick. The question is if we want to launch an attack on Metz right away or if we want to take our time. Um, because I know that the game moves into into kind of a... Because I know the game moves into more defensive the defense being favored i think our best bet is probably just to launch an attack right away but uh if this enemy unit here or if the enemy you know combines it doesn't our estimates of enemy strength there are pretty hazy so what we could do is we could leave the quarantine army or whatever it's called in place and then we can move these guys all well, these their firepower is pretty weak it must be again because they're low on supply so i think that army is going to have to wait a turn so, again, it show we should be able to move supply through. Um, I don't know. I don't see anything, any options for depots anywhere. So building depots doesn't seem to be all that, much, all that important. Not to mention, even if it is, we're only one hex into the enemy territory. So I can't imagine advancing one hex is going to require a depot. I guess we can take a look. Let's see here. Build fort, build depot. You cannot build a depot here. Um, some structures are already present, not enough control in the region. So what's our current control here? Um, Theonville. Military control, western entity, 60% disputed ownership. Does that mean the enemy still has troops? They may still have troops here. So we'll leave those guys on the defensive. We'll wait then. I guess we'll wait one, one maybe two turns. We'll move these guys into Verdun. It looks like they're going to take nine more days. Um, and then once they arrive in Verdun... Um, some of them are still coming in. Goodness gracious, they're taking forever. <sighs> so, yeah. This hex isn't bordered by any enemy armies, so we're going to move the reserve, the general headquarters reserve, forward a bit along with its uh, aerodrome. So we're going to move these guys forward. Once they get here, we'll launch this attack on Metz. That should be enough reinforcements. And uh, the reserve army in Lorin, or however it's pronounced, we'll move these guys here to San Mathel. So we're going to attack, but we're going to attack in one more turn. Um, I don't really have anything else I can do in the colonies. I'm just going to make sure the German Navy isn't sailing all around, being a, a general nuisance. 
doesn't look to be. Uh, we can go ahead and check the uh, Persian Gulf, or not the Persian Gulf. We can go ahead and check. It doesn't look like anything is going on in the Pacific. I don't know where the German fleet went, though. I don't see it anywhere. But yeah, so that's good. Um, we'll go ahead and check the blockade box. That looks still good still. And the Atlantic shipping box. Still says the Germans have a fleet here. I guess we should change their uh, change their approach. We're going to go ahead and attack at all costs. All out attack on the uh, German fleet here. I guess that doesn't make much of a difference. So we've got Atlantic shipping and these guys. And maybe we'll have a naval battle. I guess we'll see. Um, German Navy doesn't look to be doing anything else. There are mines here. I probably should be raising some British forces, right? But uh, why don't I go ahead and do that? So I've raised some French reserves. I'm sure the Germans are raising some too. What's a, mon a mountain brigade? Those could actually be useful here in the south. I don't think there's any mountains here, though. I think it's just on the defensive. So we'll actually not do that. We'll raise a infantry division at Verdun, kind of as are going to be our kind of reserve depot, if you will. And then we'll, res we'll raise a reserve unit there as well. We'll raise two res two reserves, one in toll. So we're raising three French units. We're going to go ahead and raise some British units as well. We haven't done that yet. So, uh, yeah, let's let's do that here. Let's find some regular British infantry divisions. I think what we'll do is so we can kind of identify them easily is we'll raise them in Southampton. Raise two, whoops, two units in South, two infantry divisions in Southampton. And there's got to be a reserve division in here somewhere. Kitchener is in, in full force raising... Um, Raising forces. Heavy artillery. I don't really feel the need to buy any more warships at this time. Oh, we can choose by infantry or unit types, so there we go. Uh, should we raise some Irish? Raise the Irish and force them to fight with us? I don't that might cause political political upheaval, perhaps. Um South African infantry divisions. You know what we're going to do is we're going to raise some territorials and uh, some colonials in Africa. We're going to go back here and we're going to reinforce Lagos. We're going to raise... Oh, it doesn't give me that option. Only in British East Africa. What's up with that? All right, well, we'll raise a couple. I guess we can only raise one. Raise those guys in Africa. Maybe we can start taking the offensive against the German col colonies. Since we haven't done anything else, and uh, we'll go to our decision map. Um, the new general's option is still up there, isn't it? Oh, are these guys all locked? It's fixed for 490 turns. What, are you kidding me? What if we go far right? Okay, I don't know what I just did there. So, French generals all look locked. Everyone that I can see, anyway. Locked, 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 locked. So that's lame. Unlocks six generals for use. So does it mean I can't do it until then? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, they're locked. Maybe that just means they're off map. Yeah. All right. Cool. So we can appoint this guy to here. Doing that would eliminate some of the units stack. Okay. Um, yes. Let's appoint him here. So, these guys are still being raised, but we've got a general appointed to these new troops. So that's cool. Um, and other than that, I think that's about all. I'm just kind of glad we figured that out. We'll go ahead and end the turn. I'm probably not doing a very good job in planning for the future right now and, and setting up, I don't know, whatever I need to be setting up to be successful. But... Uh, and I also don't like the idea of waiting another turn before we launch our attack on Mets, but uh, it's what we're going to do, because I don't think we're ready yet. Hopefully supply re gets better in Theonville and we get more control there. I agree, clown. Ireland and uh, and England, Ireland and Britain, long history of, of loving each other and getting along really well.
by the way, my last name is, is very Irish. I'm, I'm a very Irish person, but um, somewhat of an Anglophile, so I guess that makes me a traitor to my people. I don't know. Leave us out of your bloody war. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, the British were good at, uh, at dragging the whole world in on their side because they were, they were really great at being jerks, right? Back in this time, anyway. I have been to Ireland once, but I wish I was older when I was there. I was 13, so I don't remember a whole lot. We went to visit a great aunt of mine. It was a pretty cool experience, but... I don't know how, you know, it's one of those things where I don't think I was old enough to fully appreciate everything. Then I was in England about seven years ago. My uh, friend of mine, his mom got a job at the, I, I live in the Wisconsin area, and a friend of mine's mom is a scientist, and she got a job at the University of Newcastle, so she wanted him to come visit, and the school paid for that, and then she didn't want him to fly alone, so I got to go. So that was cool. Gunboat diplomacy. Yeah. The load the loading seems a little bit quicker this turn. Maybe that's because I didn't do anything. I wonder if I'll be able to draw German troops away from the Russians if my attacks are successful, though. I guess we'll see. Can we make peace, though? Can the Western Western allies make peace if we just re retake Alsace-Lorraine? I don't care about the rest of Germany. I don't want to overthrow the German Empire. I've kind of got a soft spot for them. I just want to retake Alsace-Lorraine for the French, and then we can call it a day, right? Am I having fun talking to you guys? I guess I feel like I've been ignoring the chat a little bit. Not intentionally, just I've been too too busy trying to figure things out. I do enjoy talking to, to chats. You know, the German spelling of Alsace and Lorraine, it doesn't appear to be included in this game. So it, uh, it appears to mainly be, and holy cow, they are stacking a lot of units in Strasbourg. It appears to mainly be looking at the French approach. So I'm sorry, but I'm not going to go with the German spelling when the map has the French one. And maybe it's a biased map, right? Isn't, is Age Out a French company? I know they were part of Paradox for a while, weren't they? And then they split off and joined Slytherin and whatnot. I never said the French were reasonable. I don't know if anyone was reasonable at this time, right? You know, I think what, I'll, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a kind of a large uh, play-by-email. Because of the way the game works, you've got, you know, two players can play on the Allies and one on the Germans. And uh, uh, there's, a, there's a guy over in, um, in Belugan Campaign's chat all the time um, his, I don't know what his name is, but his, uh, his chat icon is Ragnar, and I know he's German, and I think he's actually a helicopter pilot for a police station or something like that in Germany. And I'd like to get him, because he's pretty good, he's been crushing Belugan in uh, Commander of the Great War. I'd like to get him to play Germany, and then I can play as, as, uh, as France or Russia, and Belugan can play as, you know, whichever other ally, and we can do like a three-person um, play-by-email thing. We could throw it on YouTube. I think that'd be pretty cool. Silly crop babies. All right, so it doesn't look like they've strengthened Metz. I'm kind of worried that Strasbourg is really building up and planning a, an attack here. Um, let's see. One thing that I haven't mentioned is there are different... Uh, you have Units have kind of a max level of command, as you will. So you can see here uh, up on the top right, it says provided command 50, required command 27. So all the units in this army require 27 command. The officer in command has the ability to provide 50 worth of command. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of consolidate some troops into this army because it's got some extra room. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll bring 12 over here and I'll bring it up to 39 if my math is correct. And I don't think there's anything less than 12. Doesn't look like it. Um, so you can see here provided command 39. I wonder if there will be a penalty if we just go one over. I guess we'll see. Uh, there's a 2% penalty. So we can draw one of these cavalry units off into the reserve army. And uh, that should get us back under 
Oh, down as far as 45. So apparently cavalry takes up a lot. Um, just going to try and consolidate forces into a single, not a single hex, but fewer hexes. That's at its max. And we can combine the 26th and the 15th cores into just the 15th cores. So the 15th core is now 24, 24, and 49. So fewer parts, fewer um, elements, if you will. Looks like we've got about 1,300. So if the enemy does attack Colmar, we might be in some trouble. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some more troops to the north. We're going to leave uh, Dubal's uh, force down in Mulhausen, but we're going to shift two more cores to the north, because as far as I can tell, the enemy doesn't have much in the way of, of Freiburg. And uh, this way we can hopefully counter any enemy counterattack against Colmar. What's this mean? 16. Does this mean we're low on supply? Supply received and sent. Ammo received and sent. Pillaged. Center of powers. Military control. Number of days to enter this region. Detection. What does that 16 mean? Does anyone know what this little 16 means down here? I think they did make a Napoleon game. Uh, but I don't know what the name of it was. But I'm pretty sure they did. Does anybody know what this 16 means? Anybody. Is it like too many units and too small a, an area? Well, it says two. Uh, the Commander series is not a job. Commander series is made by Lords Game Studios, who makes the Panzer Corps game. Um, it does look a lot like World War One Gold. It plays a lot like World War One Gold. Some of the kind of pre-war war decisions, a lot of the art, some of it, it you know, you can see a lot of stuff that's taken from uh, from World War One Gold. Does anybody? Can anybody tell me what these numbers mean? I wanna. I don't wanna make decisions to attack before I know what this does or what this means. Nobody. All right. I'm guessing it might be bad. That would be my guess. Maybe supply. It looks like a... It looks like some kind of supply thing. I don't want to make the supply situation worse. I don't want to be overstacked and lose because of it. But something tells me it's not good. Although this has a 26 and this is a... Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to guess if this if we get rid of this. Yes. So it's got to do something to do with supply. Because we take away the supplies can move and that goes away. So maybe it's stockpiled supply. Um, can I go back to what I was looking at? Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and launch our attack against Metz. Uh, most of our units should be in pretty strong and good supply. Hopefully they don't attack from Sarbar. It looks like the enemy's relocated some troops there, and they could certainly do that. Um, we're going to go ahead, and it'll take seven days to get there. Um, I don't know if we can synchronize our movements with the other armies, but we're going to try. Meanwhile, we're going to consolidate some of these forces as well. I want to try and get fewer, fewer forces, fewer elements, uh, so we can have a more... I feel like it will be more efficient if we have fewer elements. So we're going to merge the Reserve Army of Lorne and the Tromsme whatever army. So we've got about a thousand there between them. We've got about 300 coming up from the south. And we're going to move everyone into aggressive stances. I hope that doesn't mean we attack, you know, uncoordinated, but uh, I need to attack all-out attacks if we're going to be successful there. So seven days for those guys, five days for those guys. We're going to have the British move in from the north, and uh, we're going to have them synchronize as well. Maybe have them do a forced march. We'll move them into a uh, attack at all costs. Hopefully that means they'll support uh, each other. Um... And we're going to kind of try and consolidate these units down. Magazine. So I guess that's a supply area. It can hold supply. Acquiring me army. And we can pull, pull this unit in. So you can see here we're at the max there. And we can merge these two units. So just doing a little bit of con consolidation here. We're going to move the main army south. We're going to keep the core here. Hopefully Theonville is a strong enough fort 
that it can kind of hold on its own. I'm thinking we should have enough troops to overwhelm the Germans, but uh, I guess we'll see. I'm not terribly certain. Um, we're going to kind of merge some of these forces again. Some of these guys are new troops that are just being raised as well. Um, merge these two guys. So again, cutting down on the number of units. And... I think we'll move these guys to Morganhow. Well, no, they're not... Oh wait, they're locked anyway because they're new, new troops. Um, we'll move these guys south to the mountains. We're gonna move them by rail so they get there. Thirty-nine days. Never mind. There, one day by rail. We'll get some troops out of there. This army's frozen in place for now. The first corps move into San Mihal in case it uh, in case the attack fails. I don't know if they can support from that far back, but I don't see the, the harm in moving... I can't move in more aggressive. Why not? I can't move into an assault posture. Why not? Maybe because there's no enemies nearby? I don't know. We can do that, though. Anyway. So, we've got this going on here. Uh, we've got some money building up. I'm not sure what I want to do as far as... I think what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to wait just a little bit longer until I know more along the lines of um, what what I need as far as reinforcements before we do anything. See, these guys are new. This new commander, Jean Pater, whatever. Oh, the generals just showed up in Paris. That's what they did. Okay. That's cool. So, 24. We've got a whole bunch of generals in Paris. Score. So, actually, this force is a new force, which is some reserves that were just raised in Paris. So, I don't know if we have enough rail rail movement points to move them, but I think we'll try and move them down to Nancy. It's going to take them 38 days, but we do have rail points. Zero, eight days. All right, so we're moving troops into to the front, um, which is good, because we need to get these guys up front. And then we've got an, we'll have Joseph, whatever his name is, command that force. Three-star general versus just a two-star, which we pulled out of the hex. These guys are also, why can't I move? There we go. So we're going to send the ent whatever army. We're going to send these guys to Verdun, and we'll move them by rail. So we're bringing a lot of reinforcements here to the south. Um, we're attacking Metz, and let's see how everything plays out. The war will not be over by Christmas. I think I can predict that much. So uh, here we go. I really wish I was getting updates on what was happening on the Eastern Front, by the way. I just think that's something that really should happen. Just because you're the, the Western allies doesn't mean you have no clue what's going on in the East. To have to scroll over there and look at all the different territories and see what's happening all the time, I don't think that's a terribly uh, effective way. I think there could be some news clippings or something that pulls up if there are major battles. Um, because, you know, the French and the Russians did talk to each other a little bit. Yeah, there's a Napoleon campaign series by them, but it's it's older, I think. I think it's probably about as old as, like, Birth of America, the first one. Crossing my fingers to see what'll happen here. It's early October, too, so I think units are starting to get entrenchment points as well, so... We'll see how this plays out. I probably should have checked the notes on the bottom right. You're right. I totally forgot those were there. It's probably my own fault that I didn't know uh, didn't know what was going on. Ugh. Well, yeah, I'm sure it stopped during the revolution, but hopefully the Russians aren't revolting in early October of 1914.
Come on now. I guess I'll have to check, go through those notes. I can't believe I missed that. Probably shouldn't have minimized that whole note thing on the bottom, but it takes a little bit of space, so I'm going to have a little bit of catching up to do. An October Revolution. If the Russians are revolting already, we're in a lot of trouble. Although, at least from the defensive standpoint, if the Germans aren't willing to go through Belgium, it'll make it easier to hold our lines, especially if we can take some of the, some more of these uh, forts in Alsace-Lorraine. These are pretty strong fortress complexes. Um, Metz was a huge fortress. I don't know if the Germans, you know, strengthened it or kind of let it go, but it was a huge fortress complex during the Franco-Prussian War that a lot of the French uh, defensive was based around um, prior to the, the defeat at, uh, at Sedan. The French had... Uh, I think there were like a hundred or two hundred thousand soldiers at Metz and forts that were surrounded and then ended up surrendering after the French defeat at the Battle of Zidan. Think we can make it to Stuttgart? My guess is not. I haven't done a good job uh, following the whole French Elan Vital. I've been very um, conservative with my attacking. Uh-oh. So there's a battle taking place in Metz. The enemy commander's better than me. And estimated power is about the same. Um, prepare to withdraw. <laughs> Should I retreat already? Um, delay the battle, allowing other units to march to the sound of the guns. Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Whoa. Did those troops arrive? Was that a brilliant strategy? Did that work? Come on, tell me. Yes! Okay, so we lost 70,000 men, but holy cow, the enemy lost 40,000, and uh, yeah. So we've got 300,000 men left. They've only got 100,000, and it's a French victory. The Battle of Festung Metz. I'm not dug in. I, I'm the one who is attacking. So the enemy had... Holy cow. So Franz Karl von Bülow, uh, von Murdra, Quast, and some other general. The only one I know there is von Bülow, who I believe commanded the German 1st or 2nd Army during the actual war. Man, that was a huge battle. No, I didn't tell you to go. Uh-oh. I didn't tell that unit to march into this territory, did I? Maybe I did. And I think the enemy army that was just defeated probably retreated there. Uh-oh. Hopefully there's not enough time left in this turn for them to fight. Gosh, that's huge. Defeating the Germans at Metz is huge. I'm pretty sure either Metz or Strasbourg are the biggest fortification systems, and I don't know if the game differentiates between the different forts. I'm not sure. But uh, that's a pretty big victory there. <laughs> My wife needs a new laptop, Murphy. Her uh, her computer just isn't working well at all, so I think I'm going to have to get her one. Or she's going to buy it herself. She ranks higher than me right now at her company, so she can buy it herself. But I'm the techie, so I'll probably be the one who purchase it with, with her money. So that's cool. Um, So awesome. We took Mets. That is sweet. Um, So we've now taken four poor provinces in what's, I believe, also us. Theonville might be in, in Rhineland, I'm not sure. But it uh, looks like von Bülow has pu pulled back to Morgenau. Meanwhile, the main German army seems to still be in Strasbourg, which I don't think there's any way we'll be able to we'll be able to take that. This army's moving into, into whatever the city is. I don't think there's any way for us to... All right, and I'm going to cut the stream off right there. Uh, I appreciate you tuning in once again, and um, looks like, you know, we've successfully taken Metz, so that's a pretty big accomplishment, one of the major fortress cities that really just leaves Sarborough and Strasbourg in terms of the major fortress cities, which the French would have as their primary goal and primary targets. Uh, so, so far, it's been a pretty successful early uh, war period for the French, uh, we're not sure how things are going for the Russians. I think that's one thing the game could improve upon is being able to kind of give you messages about how things are going on the Eastern Front. Because uh, while there's certainly an element of fog of war that should be there, it also shouldn't be something where you have to 
scroll over to see what territory has been taken and where you get absolutely no information about battles that are being fought either. But anyway, that's not really the point of this video. I'm just kind of wrapping up this part of the stream. I appreciate you tuning in. I'll go ahead and finish up the next part of, uh, of the live stream. That'll finish the first live stream, the live stream that took place on August 26th. Uh, the next part will... Um, We'll uh, probably have another stream available by the time you're seeing this, though. So I anticipate this being a fairly long series. Age Odd games take a while. So, you know, this might be my longest series ever. Uh, I guess we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, let me know what you think about, uh, about this type of series where, you know, I'm doing more live recording that I'm putting through. So um, probably less polished, maybe less historical discussion. I'm trying to mix it in there somewhat, but I'm also just getting used to the game. So it's kind of a, a game demonstrator more than a historical discussion like some of my previous videos. Uh, but that might fit better anyway, considering the fact that I've already done several hours worth of World War I discussion. But I will try where I can to mix in more historical topics and, and debate uh, and uh, whatnot. Um, and also maybe a little more interaction with the audience as well uh, from the stream. But anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.